Joining us this evening, first up, is the French ambassador to India, Ambassador Emmanuel Luno, who is uh, joining us here at, and speaking to us here at CNN News 18. Ambassador, thank you very, very much for joining us and also taking the time out. I know you're right now in Paris. First up, we'd like to offer condolences to all those who have lost their loved ones and the kind of attacks, dastardly attacks that we've seen in France and now we're seeing across Europe. Also expressing solidarity like all of India and like the Prime Minister with France for taking a very, very strong position against radical Islamist terror. There is more that we've seen with what has happened in Vienna today, Ambassador. Yes, thank, 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 you, thank you very much. These are trying times uh, for all Europeans. Europe is really mourning these days. There was this terrible attack in Vienna and Europe is family it's united uh, around its values we are standing together we're not going to surrender to terrorists we'll not give up our values we're really all together in this fight and I have also a lot of uh, sympathetic thoughts today for the Austrian people ambassador if I may ask you how would you view what has happened recently in France with the beheading of Samuel Paty the attack in Nice what happened in Avignon there's been so many instances My country has always stand for values. And we, uh, we're a country where obviously every citizen is free to practice or not to practice and to believe or not to believe. And uh, we want, we really want to, to respect this freedom. And uh, obviously some, uh, so, some terrorists and people, movement, organization do not see uh, these values, do not share these values and want, want us to give up on these values, which we are not going to do. True, but um, Ambassador Luno, you know, if I may also ask you, uh, recently we've had the Indian Foreign Secretary, Harsh Singla, over in Paris, and I know you are in Paris because of those, uh, because of that too. What was discussed over Thursday and Friday uh, in these meetings, uh, the range of issues in media, uh, you know, uh, that were discussed was radicalism, terrorism, also part of the discourse? Well, uh, that was an outstanding visit. We were very proud that uh, the French secretary uh, paid his first visit outside of Asia to France. And uh, I must uh, tell you that the, uh, the uh, meetings, the discussions were uh, amazingly confident. I attended the, the meeting. That was the reason for my coming to, to Paris. and. Uh, this was uh, ranging from uh, the Indo-Pacific to very uh, uh, practical and forward-looking uh, cooperation, uh, including the, uh, the preparation for, for the India's participation in the UN Security Council as of next year. As you know, we have a great project to the UN Security Council. We want to work together on terrorism, obviously, on maritime security, on, uh, on Africa, which is a very big topic in the uh, in the UN and obviously also on UN Security Council reform. You know that uh, mm. uh, long-standing supporters of uh, India uh, being a full member, uh, permanent member of the Security Council, yes. we feel that uh, it's, uh, it's needed if we want the, uh, the UN to be effective. Uh, and and uh, we also are fine-tuning our strategy to, uh, to be as efficient as possible. Mm. We, we feel that there, there, there's a window and we should move forward. True, absolutely, and we welcome the support that France has extended, and I know it's been a, a long time pending. We hope we take great strides on that front because this is something which should happen. Personally, I, I believe that we as a nation, that is India as a nation, should have had a permanent seat in the UN Security Council decades ago. But uh, we'll see how that progresses. Coming back to what's happening in France and how Prime Minister Narendra Modi and all of India uh, stood with France expressing solidarity. India stands with France was actually trending for more than three days on Twitter. Your thoughts on this support? Well, I'm, I must say that uh, the French uh, authorities, government, but also the French people are very grateful uh, to, uh, for the reaction of the Indian authorities. I mean, uh, uh, we noticed that India was the, uh, uh, among the first countries and uh, obviously the first country outside of Europe or North America to, to react and to fully support. 
No, I, I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, uh, we, as you know, we share the same values of democracy, of freedom, mm -hmm. of tolerance. So I'm totally surprised. And we have this outstanding partnership. We are friends in good and bad times, and these are bad times for us. And uh, mm -hmm. India is always there. So uh, we're very, we're very grateful. Very grateful. Well, uh, we stand in solidarity, and we are, you know. Uh, we hope that France emerges out of this quickly. President Macron has t been rock solid. He's taken the right stand against radicalism. And uh, he's also called the likes of Samuel Paty a quiet hero. But he's also been subject to a lot of criticism. A lot of it has been very, very personal. Uh, the pr president has tried to rise above it all and brush it off. But how would you view this? We have a lot of surprise. I mean, uh, we've never thought that uh, personal uh, uh, insults or hateful attacks were part of uh, an acceptable uh, international discussion and how leaders should behave on international stage. So we've been very, very surprised and very shocked, I must say, uh, by these attacks. But in, in, the, in, the, in the same time, meantime, I must say, as I said, I mean, we've been uh, comforted by uh, by the states mind like Prime Minister Modi and, uh, and reaction by the Indian authorities uh, who clearly voiced uh, their solidarity with, uh, with us and uh, that they share the same value. True, but because frankly we also saw a certain level of protest by fringe groups across uh, different pockets in our country who were trying to attack President Macron but uh, were quiet on the likes of Imran Khan and Recep Erdogan. But the larger issue of taking on radicalism, there is a cause and effect. So everybody wants to defend Islamophobia, but they don't want to talk about fundamentalism, radicalism, uh, and, and also taking on terrorism driven by these uh, you know, extremist thought. India and France and other nations have worked together, and uh, we have to take this on. That's, that's the larger position. Is France committed on this path? Yeah, I mean, we uh, our two countries have an outstanding cooperation against uh, terrorism. I mean, these are, these are they are statements that you recent recent days, but there's also uh, underground cooperation. Hmm. I mean, it's no, it's no surprise. I mean, uh, uh, both India and France are, are victims of terrorism, so we uh, we are very we are totally aligned on this. We hmm. share intelligence, we share best practices. Uh, we, we have joint trainings and uh, jointly also we, uh, we work in international frameworks. We, we are going to work in, in the UN Sanctions Committee as of uh, next year. Mm -hmm. And um, we uh, very soon also, uh, India is going to host uh, a big conference, No Money for Terror, because uh, fighting mm -hmm. against uh, the root of terrorism, the, yes. the, uh, the financing of terrorism is very important. And that's uh, what we've been doing also for years together. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes, very, very close cooperation. Well, yes, the FATF is making Pakistan sweat, but there's more to be done. And like you said, going forward, there should be more done. But uh, the other aspect, Ambassador, and I have to ask you this. We are very excited and actually counting down on the next batch of Rafale uh, to touch down on Indian soil and it is very, very significant, especially given the current situation in the region. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of immense pride for me, I must say. I mean, we, uh, DASO has been uh, able to deliver fully on time as per contract in spite of COVID. I mean, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the teams have been working amazing back in France. We've been working days and nights, weekends, just to make sure that the, uh, the Indian Air Force would be delivered on time. Mm. And so with these uh, new uh, free uh, planes being ferried on the 4th of November, it's another illustration of this total commitment. Mm. I'm mm. Uh, really happy and uh, fully confident that all 36, the full batch, will be delivered by 2022 as agreed and right. uh, mm. really useful for the Indian Air Force. Well, fingers crossed on that, Ambassador. But uh, you've, you've been the diplomatic advisor to the Prime Minister in the past. You have a fair share and, of course, a, a vast knowledge of geopolitics. America is going to vote. France is going to see elections very, very soon. But uh, is there going to be a comprehensive shift in the way Indo-Pacific is seen? And India's role in this region is going to be seen, irrespective of what happens across nations in the West. 
Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a top priority. It's not totally new, I must say, for, for my country as for India. I mean, we always believe that France is a, is a neighbor of India, actually, that we have a power of the Pacific and uh, that we have a population, we have, a, we have interest in the region. Uh, but yes, I mean, Indo-Pacific is uh, a key priority hmm. because that's one of the parts of the world where uh, our values are at stake. Hmm. We have to we have to make sure that uh, uh, the rule of law, the freedom of navigation, freedom yeah. is enforced, and that's what we we're doing together. I mean, uh, that's hmm. what we're doing also with uh, other partners, with Australia, and with yeah. some others. Uh, we 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 are making sure that the uh, the freedom of navigation is enforced, which means uh, some, some joint patrolling. We also exchange uh, information, intelligence. We have uh, we have we have uh, sent officers to your IFC, IOR. Yes, you have. Yes. We uh, and uh, we're going to do much more. I mean, we we had a, a very uh, top level uh, discussion between the, between the three countries. This is uh, a matter of utmost importance and, as you say, was uh, highly mm. discussed during your foreign secretary's visit. Well, the Quad is taking some formal shape and, uh, you know, uh, you, you said that France is also playing its role, uh, perhaps as a silent partner, if I may say so. But, uh, Ambassador, final question and allow me to go a little off the book here because, uh, personally, are you following the elections in the US? Are you backing anyone between Donald Trump and Joe Biden? Where's your wager? <laughs> well, following yes, uh, I mean, uh, following yes, because even the, the importance of this election for our world, I mean, uh, yes. Uh, and on a personal touch, uh, I was based uh, post twice to the U.S. Yes, I'm aware. So uh, I know what is, what an election to the U.S. Uh, I, when I was in Washington, uh, I went maybe to half of the primaries and to both conventions. So I know the excitement, I know uh, how it is. And uh, yes, mm -hmm. then on the outcome, uh, uh, what I, we just hope is that uh, uh, whoever wins will be uh, a good partner for all of us and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a force for good to solve the, uh, the huge uh, common challenges we have in front of us, yeah. we, which are obviously uh, uh, climate change, we, which are about uh, fair trade, uh, which are about uh, uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear disarmament, non-proliferation, yes. and so on and so forth. Mm. I mean, that's, uh, that's what we wish. So we're very uh, eager to see the outcome of the election, yes. Well, you have spoken like a true diplomat. Uh, I, may, I must say that ambassador, you know, kept it very, very neutral there. But that, that's what it is. Kudos to you. Thank you very, very much for taking the time out and uh, for speaking to me here at CNN. My pleasure, Adam. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.